hello 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 everyone how are you i hope that you are doing fantastic i am today is a fa fantastic day to be alive it's a great day to be alive and i am actually um on my way to do uh, some business but i wanted to talk to you um almost like a part two to what i talked about a couple of days ago and that is being prepared for the manifestation and so my question to you is are you really ready for the manifestation and the five things that must be in place for that to happen and so i'm going to actually do me a favor if you don't mind go on and invite some people hey and hey sweetheart i'm going and invite some people because there's five things that have to happen if you have been listening to me prophetically i have been sharing with you that there are um there's a time that we are now into since we've come into the jewish new year um i explained this to you all last year september 30th as we were going into the 2020 year not based on the gregorian calendar but what that meant for believers what that meant for god's people what that meant in terms of him communicating to us and then where we are right now one thing i will always say about a prophetic people if they're not telling you the process if they're not just telling if they're just telling you this is going to happen but they're not telling you how you're supposed to operate move in and out of it you're really going to miss some steps and so i really want to make sure that i am faithful over the information and the assignment that god has been giving me over the years concerning the times in which we are living the last thing that he shared with me and told me to tell you all was this um, and I shared with this with you a couple of days ago. And please do me a favor again. Please invite as many people as you can because you guys want to have instructions because it's time for you to start actually getting the manifestation. Um, is to understand that God has said he was looking for someone to flex through. He's looking for someone he can show off in. He's looking for somebody that he can pour out his blessings on in the midst of this pandemic. He was very, very specific about what he, the timing he wanted to do it. And in the midst of this transition that we are in, the world is in, that he has already prepared us for in 2018. I know that's when I was prepared for it. Um, and and my, my tribe of, of prophets that we are connected together and people who hear God and we come together to be accountable to one another and to hear what the word and instructions are to the people, whether it's in government, whether it is in um, in the church, whether it's outside of the church, whether it's this, regardless of the seven mountains that we are assigned to speak into. And so I wanted to talk to you about these five things because I began to ask God, so what do we talk about now? And he said, you've already told them that I'm looking for somebody. And he likened it to the uh, king who was in the Bible. The story goes how he looked and he invited several people. And some people had excuses. Some people, you know, hey, I just got married. I've got to go tend to some oxen. I just got some new, you know, I just got some new cattle. Hey, I got, I got, um, I got a new house. You know, I just got some new land. And it's so very, very vitally important that we don't give God excuses specifically when he is trying to give out his promise. Let me say that again. And somebody write that down in the comment. This is not the time to give God excuses, especially since he is trying to give you the promise that he has promised you. I know a lot of us don't believe the promises of God. Not really. We just say we do. We really don't. Uh, the reality of it is, is that we it sounds good because we want to sound like our faith is intact we want to sound like everything is perfect but the reality of it is is that God literally is in the earth has his spirit in the earth angels going to and fro seeing who it is that is ready and that is capable to handle the level of blessing that he has to give to his people now why is he doing this in this time because you know so many people are going through things well why wouldn't he? he's still a good father see here's the one thing a lot of people don't understand god is not held hostage to our emotions okay he's not held hostage to our emotions or our assumptions or to our suggestions or demands or our mindset his mind is not like our mind and so we have to train our mind to operate like his mind that's why the word tells us that they let this mind be in you that was also in christ jesus well here's the thing some of y'all don't believe in jesus i get it i understand that's okay that's your thing i do so <laughs> at the end of the day i understand that when god is talking 
He is talking not to ask us our opinion. He is talking to let us know his divine and sovereign ideas and what his plans are. The unfortunate thing, however, is that many of us have been going through life forfeiting what it is that we should have. Why? Simply because of the fact that we want to have God on our time and not on his time. We want to obey on our conditions and not on his conditions. And so as I began to just think even on like, I'm going to say about three o'clock this morning, I said, okay, God, when I do this live, I want to make sure, and please, if you have not shared this, please take the time to share this. I wanted to share the things that have to happen. And I want to share some things that I have been going through, um, God preparing me as well. So we're all in this together, family. So here's the first thing I had to learn. I had to deal with my mindset. And you might say, you know, that's common sense. No, a lot of people don't have common sense. Common sense is only common to the one that has the sense. And just because you have common sense in one area doesn't mean you have common sense in every area. And so here's the thing I want to share with you. When you talk about the manifestations of God, when you talk about the promises of God, when you're talking about moving that comma to the left, like he was talking about earlier when I made that declaration, God said he's ready to move the commas to the left. Are you really prepared? And you know what? The thing of it is you have to do the mindset and the condition of the heart have to go in tandem together, okay? The condition of the heart has to say, this moment is not really just about me. This moment is about God using me in unprecedented moments. It's about the homes. It's about me being the conduit. And some of you all have never heard me say, tell this really quick story or an analogy. Let me give it to you real quick. If you've ever had seen a spigot that comes out of a house or a building and it brings that water outside and you connect a hose to it, you have the washer. I think that's what that thing is called. You have the washer and then you have the, the actual holes and depending on where you are the other end there is either a sprinkler or there is one of those things you hold or maybe there's nothing there one of the things that we have to realize is that God is the one that supplies the flow of whatever it is that's necessary to come out of that holes the blessing of the manifestation is what we're talking about but you have to be the person that's willing to be the holes you have to be the one that recognizes that although this might what's coming through me may not be mine but it cannot come through me without me getting blessed by it let me say that again what's coming through me may not be mine but I cannot it cannot come through me without me being blessed by it so the water doesn't have you don't have to worry about well you know what the person or the the ground that's on the other side that's good the good ground that's on the other side of the people that God told me to do some things for you know uh, well uh, uh, I'm not they get more than me no you got the first fruit. And if you don't understand about first fruit, you need to go look that up, honey. Because there's a blessing in the first fruit. I'm not going to get into that. And those of you who don't know who I am, I am Bishop Tim McCrary. I go by Tier McCrary because that's what my mama calls me. Actually, she called me TT. But uh, you can call me Tier. It's quite all right. Some of you all know me as Madam CEO because that's the name of the company I own. And that's fine, too. But I wanted to just make sure that those of you who just joining me for the first time have no idea of who I am, that you would know who I am and so that you would take a little time just to listen to what I have to say. So here's the thing. We're talking about A, the mindset. You have to condition yourself, your heart and mind to work in tandem together. I had to recognize, you know, as I was talking to God about some several things that uh, me and my husband um, are, are planning for, preparing for. It's not about us preparing for what we're going to do when for ourselves the first thing I said is we have to put our blessing bank together years ago the Lord had begun to give me this dream and I'm not really really good at remembering my dreams but the prophetic dreams I always remember and I remember sitting around a table at a home that I own that I check I don't own right now um, at a home that I own and I remember all the details about this home and I had invited specific people over to my home for a dinner party and I had envelopes, large envelopes, like the legal size envelopes, and I had put them out on the cocktail table in front of the fireplace. And I said, everybody, uh, open, up the, open up the envelopes. They didn't have any names on them. And I had them to put the pictures out. And I said, you know, what do y'all think about these properties? And they were like, I like this one, and I like that one, and I like that one. And it was so cool, they were passing them around. And everybody had their favorite one that they liked. And then me and my husband began to tell them, those are your homes. And they all looked in like, what? I said, no, we're not saying that by faith. We purchased these homes and we are going to give these homes to you. They are going to have your name on the title, on the deed, debt free. That's what we're going to do. 
And I never forget, I, and I kept on to that, and I said, God, I really want to make that happen one day. And I remember as God was challenging me and my husband, are you prepared for the manifestation? Have you decided who you're going to bless first? Now, of course, a lot of people will say, well, I'm going to pay my tithes first. I'm gonna, listen, let me explain to you, when God begins to manifest at the level where he's moving commas over, he will tell you where he wants to put his money that he has trusted you to manage. Let me say that again, because some, again, mindset and heart condition, some of you all may have a difficult time receiving because of the fact that you like to believe that if he gave it to you, then it's yours and it's not yours. If you have not shared this, please share and please let me know you share. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to pick somebody that, that I see that has shared and I'm going to bless you with something. All right. That's going to be my word to you. All right. So, but you're going to have to make sure I get your, your, uh, your email. All right. So I can reach out to you. So here's the thing. I had to recognize, okay, Tier, what's necessity? And so we knew how much we have to work with. Um, and we also know, well, well, tentatively, how much we have to work with. Thank you so much. Um, we know tentatively how much we have to work with. So in that tentative, in that tentativeness, how, how much would we be blessing other people? And so I said, okay. Normally, I would say, you know, I'm going to pay my tithes, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. But I had to remember, I, I have nothing to do with the management of this manifestation. Let me say that again. The manifestations that God is handing out in this time of pandemic, if you are ready, not just ready in your, in your, in your, in your thought processes, but I mean ready in your heart and in your head, which means you have a plan of action. I, rem I, I, I remember... The specifics prophetically over time that if you don't have those areas in your life together you will stifle or you'll actually take that you'll be the host but you'll actually have a uh you'll tie a knot in yourself so you'll stop and so one of the things that god began to share with me he said tear because he said this he said because you thought and i heard him so clear because it was not even a, a, a thought what am i going to do with this manifestation when it clears it did not dawn on me to think twice about somebody else first. Because I understand that I have passed the money test. I've passed the character test. I've passed several of the tests that God's put you through over and over and over while being a pastor. I've endured temptation. I've endured, you know, hardship like a good soldier. I've, hey, Eric, how are you, my love? I've been praying for you. You've been on my heart. And I have been praying daily for you. I ain't talking about no now I lay me down. I mean real prayer for real, for real about you. And so I thank God for your gift and what you are to the world. Thank you for opening up your heart for this. And so here's the manifestation, the five manifestation things that God shared with me. He said, Tear, because you didn't think of some, because you didn't think of yourself first, I can't help but cause the blessing to not only come through you, but to add some to you. I didn't ask for that. My first thought was to be a blessing. When you get a blessing, when you get the manifestation, the level that God is talking to you about, I'm talking about the kind that pays off bills. I'm talking about the kind that dissolves the things that are set against you legally. I'm talking about the things that have been plaguing you and hurting you and, and being a, a hindrance, a thorn in your, your side, immediately removed. When your prayers, as soon as you open up your mouth, they begin to be answered. This is it. We are in a prophetic decade of pay. This is a time where two things have to happen. You have to use your discernment. You have to be mindful that what you say is what you get. Now, most of us, we understand that, but we're not understanding it with the sensitivity that God needs us to understand because we are not done with this pandemic. We are the beginning of the pandemic. The pandemic is not going to be over until 2024. Hear me. When we get to 2024, that's when we're really going to be kind of like, okay, all right, we're almost back to our formal normal, but not our real normal because we will have established a new normal. But we've got some time to go. We At least from to now until 2022, we know that we are going to be still fighting what is known as COVID-19, all right? And here's the thing. In that moment, in those moments, because they're moments to God, in these years that we're going to be surviving, should we survive in obedience, I believe that when you have your heart set on obedience, God encapsulates you and he protects you and he gives you peace, even in the midst of turmoil. And what he begins to do is he begins to see how mature are you? It's so important at this moment that we sure God that we are, we are mature, even if we don't feel mature, to get mature. 
It's kind of like if you grew up with a grandma, grandma, black grandma, grandma or uh, black uh, mama, and they'd be like, you better stop crying. And you be like, <laughs> and your heart is like going a million miles a minute and you just got a whooping. <clears throat> or you just got popped in the mouth. Or you just got embarrassed. And you want to fall apart. But she says, shut your mouth. <sighs> you be, Okay, 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 okay. And you start hyperventilating. Well, you have disciplined yourself to respond to the instructions that you have been given. I am giving you instructions. The first instruction is you got to get your mindset together. If your mind is about my, the manifestation is for me because I've been praying. If I have anything to do, the word I have anything to do with this conversation that you're having, you still have not matured enough up enough. The second thing is you have to make sure that you're preparing. Now, here's the thing. As you prepare, God's going to tell you who to bless. You are being, man, this manifestation is coming so that you can give your time, your testimony, your attention, or your, your talent, or your treasure. Okay, please understand that. <coughs> Excuse me. And with me saying that, you have to make sure, please make sure, that you are willing to do so because, again, if you are a believer, if you are one that is kingdom, if you are one that's considered a Christian, you don't own yourself. You don't own yourself. If this is resonating with you, let me know that this is resonating with you, okay? Because if you're going to go on this assignment, this is very much an assignment. God is looking for who he can bless. And let me go back to this, the preparation. As I was doing the preparation phase, even getting my mind together, okay, Tier A, you can't just go and just give to everybody. This is not yours to just give. Thank you, Tanetha. I love you, my baby. Um, it is not just for you to give to whomever, okay? You have to give to whomever and lend your cause, your ability, your talents, your treasures to whomever God tells you. Again, you are manager, you are the manager over what he has given you. And I looked and I said, I had a list of people. And I talked to my husband, I said, this is going to be in the bed, this is going to be in our blessing bank. We're like, Who's gonna? And we started looking and God was like, nope, take them out. And he said, nope, you can't do this for that one. And I'm like, but God, I really want to be able to just do this little piece, but this is not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. He said, I said no. And you have to be open to the no's. You've got to be able to say, okay, you know what? This is not God. This is not mine. This is God's. Okay? So I had to say, okay, fine. And so what I said, I told God, Scott, when we got to, you know, some investments and stuff like that, I said, you know what? God's going to tell us to, to whom to invest in. And when I tell you, I start listing off names, and he started listing off names, we are in one accord, amounts, what we're going to do if we're going to make something happen, open up a door, give favor to somebody. Listen, I'm telling you, you got to be prepared. And let me tell you else, whatever you got to be prepared. Because I made a couple of calls to a couple people. And when if I ever call you, listen, let me tell you something. Those of you who have your phone number and I ever call you and I have a relationship with you, if I ever call you and I ask you, what is your number? Thank you, Eternity, for sowing your seed. I see that to those of you who want to join Eternity and, and sowing a, um, a cash app uh, connection seed to tap into that grace and favor that's on my life for influence, to tap into that grace and favor that's on me and my husband's life for increase and uh, supernatural favor. Go on and sow you a seed. No seed is too great, too small, whatever you choose to do. And I'll give that giving information in just a second. I'll post it. But listen, let me tell you something. I call people, a few people, and I said, what's your number? Somebody put, what's your number in the comments? Somebody put, what's your number in the comments? The question. Somebody put, what's your number in the comments? All right? I called somebody. I called a couple people. And I said, what is your number? And you know what they said? What number? So I was a little bit more specific. To get your vision done, or to quit your job, or to pay off your bills, or to do what it is that God is placing your heart to do, how much does it cost? How? What is your number? Everybody that's on this live that's serious about getting this manifestation, I need you to be able to answer that question. That's not a quick number in your head. What is your number? What would it cost for you to become hired by God to be the vehicle that he uses, that your sole responsibility is to be a blessing to others? I asked God, I said, God, when this happens, what is going to be my job? He said to be a blessing to others. 
and I start thinking about the Hiltons and I start thinking about uh, Bill Gates and Melinda Gates and how the baby, what's the number that they have to give away? Was it $200 million a, a, a week or some crazy number? Yeah, something. It's something or they get penalized for not giving certain money away after they, you know, certain money has come in. That is their thing. So that is their job. I want to, I want my job to be a giver. I want my job to be a full-time philanthropist. I want my job to be a, 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 come on here, somebody put kingdom financier. But I can be trusted to do that because I have given. I have given in my food stamps. I have given when there was plenty. I have given when there was literally barely a food stamp and all I had was, listen, I can do your hair. I don't have anything else to give. Or I can give you a pair of shoes I haven't worn. Or I, and it was always something God always said, hey, even the other day he said, if I tell you, to give away the Bentley, will you give it? I said, yep. He said, if I tell you to give away this house, will you give it? I said, yep. And guess what? Didn't flinch. You know why? Because it's his. How do I know it's his? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. And what does it say? The fullness. That means everything that's in it and all them that dwell therein. Everything I own belongs to God. I want to see you all be debt free. I want to see your bodies healed and whole. I want to see you become a kingdom financer. Listen, when I went to Dubai, man, that jacked me and my husband up. The level of opulence, the level of giving, the level of generosity, the level of kindness. I'm like, I want to do this every day. Just to look at the people's faces that we had exposed them to that kind of living, living in a in a in a uh, 10 million dollar home on an island that you have to be somebody to live in. Thank you so much, Majesty TV, for sowing your seed. I appreciate that. And I'm going to pronounce a blessing over you all. You all don't have a seed in the ground. You need to be sowing towards your manifestation. That's another thing. When God, God just told me, me and my husband, we had some guests over the other day. He said, he's, I had somebody there and God said, I need you to go sow a seed. You need to release a prophetic seed in her life because she's a prophet. And I said, okay. And I said, well, how much do I release? He said, no, it's not the money. You need to go release what I tell you. I said, well, God, I can just, I can just cash up. You know, he said, no, you got to give something that's important to you. And he told me specifically what to give. And I went and got that. And then here, let me tell y'all this. I learned this from my bishop. I went and got, gave her another seed, which was an again seed. Because I understand the first seed is to release that blessing for someone else, the manifestation of my management to someone else. But that second one I sold for me and my family. See, I don't put me first. I put God's agenda first and we're always blessed, always. And so I understand this. I, you are welcome, Constance. I understand this. I have to, A, I have to know my number. What is it going to take for me to come away from every distraction? All the bills, all the medical bills, whatever it is. What is it going to come for me to come off my job? What is it going to cost for me to make sure that everything is done and my kids are good for me to focus in on being a kingdom financier? Oh, that thing rings so good in my ear. A kingdom financier. And so I said, okay, fine. And I said, God, just show me what you want me to do. He said, I need you to prepare. And so, you know what, the Lord, he brought me back, um, and I have a book, and I'll put it back out there. It talks about wills, it talks about trust, it talks about wealthy conversation and what the wealthy do to maintain their money and their resources and how they are great managers and what you can do, what you need to invest in, things like that. And I'll put that up for those of you all who are interested in that. If you're interested, just put interested in the comments, and I'll make sure that I put it up for you so that you can see it in the comments. Um, and here's the thing. God said, I want you to go back, and I want you to read that book again. And I told my husband, he's like, okay, because here's the thing. When you come into a certain level of whatever it is that God gives you, you can't handle this new space in life the way you've handled the old. Michael Jackson, let's not use Michael Jackson. Who became an overnight sensation? What well, seemed like an overnight sensation is in the entertainment industry. Maybe Drake. Y'all know who Drake is, right? So I ain't talking about somebody been working since they were a kid. That's why I can't use Michael Jackson. TV star. Okay, yeah, he was on but, Disney, but right? Musically, he was. Okay, so let's use Drake. Most of y'all know who Drake is, all right? Drake, let's just say, okay, he was a Mouseketeer or whatever they call him. I don't think they call him Mickey Mouse Club. I don't know what they call him back then. Okay, well, the Nickelodeon, the Grassy, okay. So, I said the Mickey Mouse Club. Y'all forget about, forget that. I'm sorry. Um, but now we don't think about that, the Grassy. You know, we think about, we think about, yeah, like MC Hammer. We think about where he is now. 
the way he moved when he was doing Degrassi is different from the way he's got to move now with a Boeing jet with one of the largest houses or estates in Canada where he can go all over the world. Now he has to be concerned with what security he's got to be concerned with his circle. Come on, y'all. I'm trying to help you all prepare. He got to pay. Yes. Higher taxes unless you get Donald Trump's accountant. OK, uh, he's got to be concerned with how he moves in terms of where he goes, because like my, Michael Jordan or, or, or J, uh, LeBron James, you can't just go home business affiliate. I see your seat. I thank you. Um, you can't just go. Michael Jordan just can't go or Beyonce just can't go to uh, McDonald's. Well, actually, she does go to Walmart, but her mama, but she, she can't just go to Disney World. They have to shut it down there is going you're going to have to learn how to move differently so i want you all to start studying people that you admire that came from nothing seemingly put in the work and came into something because of the simple fact the way you moved in this last season of your life you won't be able to move that way and still maintain what it is that god has you to do so that's part of the preparation that's number two we talked about mindset and the heart had to be in tandem we talked about preparation and making sure that you have a plan get god's plan it is not your money. It is not your manifestation. It's not your gifting. It's not your talent. It's not your favor. It belongs to God. The next thing, the third thing, you have to have a generous heart. You have to have a generous heart. Eternity, I thank you for sowing your seed, my love. You have to have a generous heart. I'm trying to help somebody. Some of y'all know that I don't play when I come. When I say God said, I'm not. I'm so serious like I was when I said 8, 18, 18. I tried to tell y'all the COVID and the economic crisis was coming. This is, a, this is part D of that that prophetic word so please share this if you have not shared this you have to have a generous spirit that means also that you can't be the person that's going to dictate to god how much of his stuff that you're going to bless people with how much access you have to be listening you have to use this discernment in this decade of pay p-e-i or p-e-h depends on how you want to put it hey Charisse. and so you have to understand these are the five things that god has said in order to manifest the things that the manifestation this season of manifestation that he wants to give these things must be in order first they must be a practice discipline first that's right mary praise god and i give all glory to god because i only say what god says and so he said the first thing is the manifestation the uh, the, to get the manifestation operating in your life as though you are a host a conduit a kingdom financier that you have to have your mind manifest the mindset and the heart have to work in tandem together you must remember this all belongs to god you have to have a preparation a plan you have to have some disciplines and understand you can't even move the way you used to move you have to make sure that you understand that the plan that god wants you to do operating does not belong to you you do not dictate to him three you have to have generosity if you do not have generosity in your spirit man you're going to think that you can dictate to god or you're going to hold your you're going to do like this when he says to open it up or you're going to you're going to have you're, you're going to be like this when god says to ch close it there's certain ways that god wants to move let me tell you something i don't care if you had 10 billion dollars if god tells you to sow a bag of popcorn to somebody you don't sow a a, a, a thousand dollars you sow the popcorn you have to be generous obediently generous or generously generous in your obedience let me say it that way generous in your obedience okay so that means however and whenever and whatever way he tells you to do it that's the way you do it i had a situation not a situation with a conversation with my husband we was talking about a blessing bank and um there was somebody that came up in my heart god did not tell me to do something for them but i just wanted to do something for them you know when everything washes out um over time and um and i said i'm not gonna be able to do this because this person is not ready for this and he said here's a solution when i tell you god gives you solutions and you have to practice that discipline even though you want to do something more you must be obedient to the instructions hear me you must be obedient to the instructions the next thing is this your conversation this one is as big as number one your conversation if your conversation is still is still peppered with doubt Thank you, Constance, for sowing your seed, sweetheart. If your conversation is still has the sediment or the stank or the poison of, of, of being vacillating to and fro by everything you hear, if you still don't know how to balance a checkbook, 
If you still don't know how to make sure that you're not arrogant when somebody hands you the mic. Oh, I know I'm talking to somebody. If you still don't know how to deal with people talking about you like a dog. You got to get that area together. Your conversation got to tighten up. You got to make sure that you're not speaking word curses over the things or the areas that God is telling you to speak blessings over. There was, I don't know if Charisse is still on here. I don't remember this. Charisse, do you remember that time we were, we were in church and um, I said, stop cursing what God, no, stop speaking death to what God is still speaking life to. Just because it may look as though it is a dead thing. Lazarus looked dead. He smelled dead. Everybody had already given the deduction that he was a dead man. He was already buried. But if God decides to speak life into a dead situation, who are you because you in your feelings to determine that that cannot be? Listen, you want to be cut off from the manifestations as quickly as you get them? Trust, trust and believe. You cannot have word curses. You cannot be in a specific a space where you don't know your numbers, where you don't, where you think you're going to work God over and you, God is not going to work you over, where you think this belongs to you or you dictating how things should go. You are arrogant and you are a fool. Some of you all have been waiting for this. Your ancestors have been praying for the manifestation that God is trying to release in your life in this season of your life in the midst of this pandemic. And you about to mess it up with your mouth. I had to get myself together the other day and I was talking to my husband. I was talking to my, one of my very, very close friends. And I said, I said, you know what? Before I make a move, before I write a thing, before I let anything come out of my mouth, I said, I need to make sure, cause I, listen, my girlfriend, Sherry, she has rocked with me forever. All right. So she knows how I'm moving. When it comes to business, when it comes to money, you can't excite me about no dollars. I don't care if you hand me a billion dollar check. That ain't going to excite me. You know what's going to excite me? When that billion dollar check cashes. I don't give, I don't get preliminarily excited. I don't, I don't engage my emotions until it cash, till the checks cash. And I done waited about 14 days to make sure it ain't no problem. All right. So here's the thing. You cannot convince me. You cannot convince me that I'm going to sit up here and say, well, uh, well, no, somebody's going to say to me, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a blessing to you and I'm going to start doing calisthenics. No, but when God says it, I had to get my mind together and remind myself, God is not man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Those things in which he said he's going to do, he's going to do. So I have to take him at his word. So I got to make sure that my word does not proceed or overshadow what he has said. So what do I have to do? I got to get my mouth right. All right. So, Scott, what do I do? Until the manifestation comes, if I'm not moving like God tells me to move, am I in, am I not in faith? And he began to say, no, you're not not in faith. No, not my, that wasn't Scott, that was my friend. He said, you're just being cautious. He said, but your cautiousness is making you disobedient. And so I got my little piece of paper out. He said, put your blessing bank together. Start making some phone calls, asking people what the numbers are, blah, 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 blah. Oh, honey, I don't know where it's at. I think it's up here somewhere. And guess what I did? That's what I did. And then I started allowing my soul to settle in the word that God gave me. All right. I had to let my soul settle in the word that God gave me. And then the last thing is I had to, I had to marinate everything every day with faith. Every day, even when I see a hiccup, when I see something may not be going right, if I see something that, you know, something part of my deals might not be going right, guess what I'm going to do? I don't start saying, oh man, oh God. You know what I do? God, I thank you that you're going to work everything out. I thank you that everybody's on one accord. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that your hand is on this. And this is what the two, one of the tools that you're using to bless me and my family and my, my generation. God, I thank you, Father. That you have raised me up to be a kingdom financier. And this is just a part of the process, the manifestation. So, Father God, I cover this manifestation of your promise because your word will not return into you void. Neither will it not do what it has been sent out to do. God, I thank you that I operate in faith as if it is a done deal. Not just telling my head, not just telling my heart, but allowing my soul, my mind, my, my imagination, my will, my emotions, my intellect to receive everything that you have said. And I thank you that I have the abundance that you have created for me to hand out to the people that you've already assigned me to hand it out to that the last thing is I just prepare for the manifestation 
Those are the five things. I just prepare for the manifestation. I'm prepared for the manifestation. That's the stage that I am in now. That's the stage that my husband is in now. We are prepared. We're not going to let nothing frustrate us. We're not going to let nothing come out of our mouth. Even if it has nothing to even if it has absolutely nothing to do with what go or the, the type of manifestation because here's the thing. Just because God may show you or give you a glimpse of how he's going to manifest some things, there's some things he's going to surprise you in. Some things you're going to come into. I hope somebody's receiving this. And if you have not so, please do me a favor. Sow you a connection seed. Tap into the supernatural favor and grace and finances and increases on me and my husband's life. You can do that at the dollar uh, the cash app the dollar sign T Y E or paypal.me forward slash madam CEO. But listen, I need you all to understand the manifestation is not far off, but God is still looking and seeing who he can trust to be mature enough to handle what he's going to be giving. Don't be like one of those people. I cannot tell you. Let me say this. I'm looking for somebody. I'm looking for some people that I can pour about a million dollars into. You know how hard that is? It's hard. But I remember that you remember being a person that you can say, I want the million dollars, but you know, mentally and emotionally, you were not prepared to get that million dollars. Yep. Not no more. We not them people no more. <laughs> so here's the thing. It's hard to hear or to be, a, it's easy to say you want it, but it's not as easy to receive it because everybody's not ready. So that's why God said you have to be disciplined about who you give what belongs to him too because they will squander it and they are blessed to be a blessing and they cannot be trusted to be a blessing to do right by what you give them. They're not a good steward and they're not good they're not good they're not good they're not good ground to sow into. So guess what? You have to be mindful of that. You better drive, man. Man, you better drive. You're doing your thing. Man, my husband is an amazing driver. So anyway, I hope this blessed you. If this blessed you, let me know that it blessed you. To those of you who are praying, I mean, who sowed their seed, please know that I dispense the kingdom blessing over you, that God will not withhold anything and everything that you desire, everything that you need, that God, that he would abundantly supply, that every door that needs to be opened will be, do, or will be open, that the favor that God has assigned to grant to you will be given to you, that there will be no delays, there will be no denials. And even if there is a, de a delay, Please know that it is not denial and that God is moving on your behalf. I pray that the abundance of the Lord and favor would encapsulate everything, your generation, your home, and everything that you walk in divine help. So you'll be in a position to dispense that that God has given. This is a parking space for you? Oh, how cool is that? Um, so God will be able to do that that he needs to do. Some, uh, some mandra, thank you for your seed. So, and then I also pray that you would have the wisdom of the prophets. Our butts are sticking out. Man, that you would have the perfect. you would have the wisdom of the prophets to accomplish exactly what God has said, and that your ear will be in tune. All right. And then, lastly, <coughs> I want to encourage you to be empowered, but to empower someone else and share this on your page. Share this in your group. If you care about people, again, this is about generosity. That's one of your tests. You got to be a generous spirit. Sometimes it's not about giving money. Sometimes it's just about obeying God and just giving the word of the Lord out. And so I just want to encourage you. I want to empower you. I wanted to love on you. I wanted to give you some seasoned instructions. And I want to make sure that you know that the best is on its way. Just make sure that you don't mess it up by not being ready for the manifestation. I love y'all and I will talk to y'all soon. Y'all have a fantastic week. Oh, and go over to MadamCEOInc.com. Go over to Madam CEO. It was at Madam CEO Inc.com and set up some time to talk to me one on one. The strategy sessions are 150 instead of 300. And if you go to Crown Jewels Collection, all of my bags are up to 60% off. So snag them now. They're not going to be this price again. 